Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be using the rattan cane pattern that I made in my last full length video. And I'm gonna show you how I put it into different letters or numbers or whatever shape you want. Now, this is going to be a really exciting video for me because I am making rattan letters for 10K. So that means that you guys have gotten me to 10,000 subscribers. And as fate would have it, this happened during the same week as my two year anniversary on YouTube. And by some strange coincidence, I also hit 10,000 the same week on Instagram. So before I get started, I just wanted to thank you so much for your support. Um, when I set out to do this on my own, I just did it for fun and hopefully maybe I could gain a following and help all of you guys. And I have just been so immeasurably blessed by all of you and I'm so, so thankful. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, I do encourage you to subscribe. And if you're watching this and you subscribed early on or last week, or just now, thank you so much for your support. So um, I really appreciate that. I am gonna show you how I set up these letters in Silhouette Studio to Glowforge. One thing to keep in mind when you watch this video is I like struggled for some reason. I was getting my words wrong and I forgot to put the wood in my Glowforge, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it all in here because honestly, I like showing you that I mess up things and um, Hopefully you'll learn something from it as well. I don't know your, what you're gonna learn from me not putting the, machine, the material in my machine, but hey, we'll all learn somehow. So if you're here, if you're new, if you're returning and you haven't gotten a Glowforge and you would like to get one, you can use the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine. And I also will link the video on how I made this pattern to begin with so you can make your own pattern or there's even a link to purchase the pattern for yourself so you can do whatever you'd like. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. Hey guys, so I'm in Silhouette Studio. Now I am making this 10K uh, lettering. So if you're watching this around the time that I'm uploading, uh, this past weekend I hit 10,000 on both Instagram and YouTube, which I think is really cool. So um, I'm gonna do a little thank you picture and then I'm also gonna use this to launch a big giveaway that I'm doing. So if you're watching this, the first to second week of March, go check out my Instagram. I'm running a giveaway. If you're watching this after, you should probably still follow me on Instagram because I'm sure there are gonna be more giveaways coming up. So I have opened up my pre-done Breton Cane pattern. Now I'll link the video where I showed you how I did this. Um, I also have this literally available as a file download. So if you just are not interested in putting it together, I did the work for you. Now this has your circles and the pattern in there, but they're not welded. So I can kind of adjust them as needed. So I'm gonna set this to the side and I wanna set up my numbers to be the right size. So I'm gonna do 10, okay. And then I'm going to, I hit Control A, which selected all the text within the text box. And then we'll go over here and I am going to use Braden font. I like this font a lot because it doesn't have a whole lot of caveats to it. It's nice and straight and clean. Now you can choose whatever you want. Like these like book styles sometimes are nice. If you go Bookman old style and bold it, that's nice as well. But I'm gonna stick with my Braden because I like it. Now, right now I have it as a uh, font or text right now. You can tell because I have the little line saying that it's misspelled. So I need to convert this over to an object because I want to resize it exactly to the size that I want it to be. So I'm going to right click and convert to path. So basically you've told Silhouette, hey, these are not, you know, letters anymore. They're just shapes. So now they're grouped together. You can right click and ungroup. So now you can see they're all ungrouped. Now I want each one of these to be about like 11 inches tall. So what I can do is I can right click right here, group this just so I can do it all at once. And then right here in the top in our quick access toolbar is our resizing tools. You wanna make sure you have this locked to lock your aspect ratio. And then let's make this 10 inches high. So it's going to be big because my workspace is only 12 by 12 inches. I mean, it still works, but you can resize it if you want. So now I'm gonna go through here, right click, uh, ungroup, and so now I have them separate. 
So now I need to follow the steps like I did earlier with my rattan cane. So let me go through and let's start with R1. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we need to make like a little offset to kind of be the frame for this. And it's going to take a couple steps with this. So we're gonna grab this right here, go to offset, internal offset, and I'm gonna do a quarter inch. So I'm gonna type in 0.25, hit enter, you can see we have it like this. And now we're gonna have kind of like a curvy corner right here. I'm not gonna worry too much about that because the outside is really what frames it. So let's hit apply. Okay, so this is going to take a couple steps. So I'm gonna make sure I have my inside line a different color for me to see what's going on. So I'm zooming out a little bit more and I'm going to see how my pattern fits in here. So you can see my pattern fits um, like width wise, but I still need to add a little bit more down here. So I'm gonna grab this bottom one. So hold down shift and get all of these. And now we can go through and just literally make another copy. So I'll just go over here. You can either do replicate, so I'll just duplicate right below. So you can see like that. And I'm just going to use my arrows to like click it up until it's touching, <clears throat> excuse me, and then just repeat that. So you want your entire pattern to overlap your shape right here, okay? So now just to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna take my whole pattern. So when you do this, you wanna make sure that you are um, keeping your original cane pattern somewhere so you're not like, uh, so you're not saving over it but we're gonna take our entire design. I'm gonna select everything. But what I need to do is I need to only have my rattan selected and not my outline. So I zoomed in really close and I'm gonna hold down shift, click on the green line and click on the red line. So you can see the box is much smaller. So that means that it only has my cane pattern selected and then we can weld. You can see now we have one big shape all together. So now it's going to take a couple steps. We need to create the rattan cane in the shape of the inner one. And then we also need to create um, the line for the scoring for this. So let me zoom in right here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rattan cane. You can see I clicked on there. I'm gonna hold down Alt, click one time and let go. So this just made a copy of it. So now I'm gonna take this, hold down Shift, click on my pattern, go to Modify and Crop. So check it out. So now my rattan cane pattern has been cropped to the the the, the eye, not the eye, I'm sorry, the one. Now you can see you can choose, like maybe you don't like how it sits in here. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z a couple times. I'm gonna let go of that. And I'm just going to use my arrows to nudge this over to kind of get a better look within my one. All right, so now we have it right there. Hold down Shift again, get your one offset, and then again, crop. So you're cropping your background to the, the, what am I trying to say? I'm sorry, to the inside offset. So now we have just a couple more steps. We need to have this background shape cut out so that it has space for this to go in. So if I were to take my pattern, hold down shift and weld it to this background like this, it's just gonna turn solid because the bottom of this one is solid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little score line that I have already, and I'm going to go over to my offset panel. And again, this is something that I did in my rattan cane pattern. So if this is not making sense because I don't know what's going on with my words today, uh, I did explain it a lot better than that one. So we're gonna do an internal offset, just a small one. We're gonna do like 0 0.01, enter, and then apply. So whenever you create an offset, Right after you make it, that's what's selected. So we're gonna keep our internal offset selected. Hold down shift, click on that background, 
go to modify and subtract. So we're going to cut out from the back shape that little offset line that we made. So subtract. And so now you can see we have that going on. And the reason why we made the line just inside the current line is because this pattern is the exact size as the current line. So when we go to weld it, it won't weld cleanly. So we're gonna take it and click on our internal rattan cane pattern, shift click, weld. So now check that out. We have our one right here. And then I'm just going to click this button to send it back. And the reason why I did that is I'm going to have this green here. So we're going to set all of this up. I'm going to do this one with like a red line. So you can see red line in here, red line out there. And then this inside line is um, a score. So I'm going to keep the line green because the way silhouette brings it in is it goes by line color. So I'm going to take this over here. I'm going to actually copy and paste this in a new document because I did the exact thing I told you not to do, not to work in my original file. So I'm just going to bring it into here and then close this without saving and reopen. And then I'm just going to do a time lapse for these last two. All right, so I'm in Glowforge. I'm going to hit new design, which will create an empty design. And then I can bring all of my um, letters in individually. That way I can ignore some and run some at the same time. So I'm gonna hit this button right here to import artwork and upload. So choose where they are and I'm just going to bring them in. All right, so my one is coming in. As you can see, this is some sort of straggler that was left over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that first. And then I'm going to drag my score to be the first thing that happens. So you can see there's my, my one right here. So let's go ahead and ignore all of this for now as we bring in all of our files. And then my Glowforge looks kind of dark. So I'm gonna go right here and refresh bed image. I will admit I opened it while it was running. So that probably wasn't great. All right, so I'm gonna drag this zero down here. And again, I'm going to ignore for now. I like having them all in the same workspace so I can see. I'm just setting them up to ignore. And then here's my last one, which is my K. And I just closed and opened my Glowforge because I accidentally opened it before. So I'm gonna let it kind of process again. I might have to turn it off and back on. Yeah, I do. So I'm just gonna set all of this to ignore. I'm gonna turn my Glowforge and turn it back on and I'll just see you in a minute um, once I have this ready. Okay, so I have my... Um, birch plywood from woodpeckers in my machine and it's masked. I think I had my ring light on when I did this. So um, my workspace looks really dark, um, but I can tell like there's my board. So you know what? Like I'm literally just going to do it anyway. I'm going to start running this. So I'll just start with my, actually I'll start with my one first because that uses the least material. So if I mess this up, I'm not, you know, messing up a ton. So let's go over to my one. I am going to score this line. I'm using a setting I programmed in called Birch Mast, just to account for the masking. So I did my speed 200 and my power at 30. And then I'm going to cut. I'm gonna do my Birch settings that I've programmed again, 160 full power. So we're going to take this and I am going to try to kind of maximize what I'm doing. Um, I'm just rotating it, even though now that I'm thinking about it, there was no reason for me to do that. But hey, this is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna set it all the way on this side so I have all this for the rest of it and hit print. Hey, it's me. I'm canceling this um, because it was so dark because I didn't put my piece of wood in there. 
that's why it's so dark so um, I'm gonna keep this in the video because that was a silly mistake but maybe you did that sometime so let me put this in and then you'll see what it should look like okay it's in there my wood's in there so the reason why that happened is I accidentally opened my glowforge while it was scanning and then I put the wood to the side to wait for it to be done and then I just forgot so let me go through set my focus and we'll repeat this process again. Now that I know it's not really an issue, I'm literally just going to um, do all of them if they fit. So let's, I'm gonna turn this K because I want it to kind of fit within this space. Can I maximize that? And we, We'll slide that over there. So hopefully this will save us a little bit of wood on this side too. You can use that for keychains, different things like that. All right, we're looking good. So let's go ahead and set up all of our settings. So in case you're wondering, I do make a lot of mistakes. I'm not sorry for them. I just learned <laughs> to put my material in, but um, yeah. So let's just cut this birch. And look, I literally set that to engrave because I was talking. So let me just make sure I have all of these set up, cut, cut. And they all have the same colors, so that's good. All right, so let's print and I'll see you at the end. Okay guys, so here is my, here are my letters. Um, so again, you know, I fumbled my way through it, but hey, that's life, so I'm going to keep it here for you. Now, if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. It really does help my channel. And um, if you're thinking about getting a Glowforge of your own, you can use the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine. And if you're still here at the end of this video, I just wanted to take this moment again to thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for believing in me and I hope I will see you in the next video.